The third common pillar is the democratic ethics. The ethics that say each and everyone in this country is a they have the right to get their freedom. Freedom from hunger, freedom from the absence of shelter, freedom from carrying on their own life to their own prospect and others, and freedom against oppression. And it's not only the United States who stood up against the British and snatched his independence from a colonial power. It is also Bangladesh which did it. In 1857, the soldiers, the mightiest, raged against the British to claim for independence, which is called Shibuya Law. In 1905, it is the Bangladeshis who again fought against the British to keep the Bengal together. In 1947, it is the Bengali leadership of Fudra and Sarwarti which brought the independence. And even then, when the economic liberation and economic independence of this Bangla people, Bangladeshis did not come in. In 1971, all the people of Bangladesh came for the liberation. So that democratic ethics are there and had been there. And the fourth pillar is the empowered citizenry. A citizenry which U.S. Constitution has given everyone so that we, if we are even seniors, if we are even women, if we are even handicapped, if we are even uh, deprived of handicapped and physically enabled, our U.S. Constitution has guaranteed rights to all of them. Given this bonding, and Bangladesh have not aspired, has been able to reach to this in enlightened citizenry milestone as yet, but it has begun the beginning. It has three prime ministers who are women. It has successfully fought against military dictatorship. It has thwarted army to come every time it is the people who have stopped the army to take over the power. Even when the army is lurking today in Bangladesh, in your left and your right side in the arm and the front, it is not the political powers that will stop them. It is the people who will stop them. And they need the support of the people of the United States. Given this thing, what, what the United States and Bangladesh can do together? The first field is cultivating and sharing knowledge. Education is free and available to all in the United States. It is a one system of education with emphasis for different vocations, different groups and others. It provides social mobility in each and every aspect of the game. Whether you come from Bangladesh, or you come from Sri Lanka, or you come from Thailand, or you come from Vietnam, or you come from China, when you are enrolled in the United States, your credentials are measured, accepted, and you progress to your social mobility. Unfortunately, Bangladesh education system today is producing three distinct streams and rivers where the waters never meet. One river produces children who are versed in Arabic and the knowledge of Arabic and creates a career which lives on faith, whether wrong or right. The mother of the sister. The other river of Bangla creates the class, which is middle class, who has a career in civil service, somewhat in the media, somewhat in the business, and low and low middle class. 
and the privileged at that so-called private school, English medium, upper class educational states. When we wrote the first five-year plan, and unfortunately I had small contribution to that, I was invited by Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to write the first five-year plan, and I had been writing it. We said there was only one stream. There will be no differences between educational system of Madrasa or Bangla or English. Yes, there may be different emphasis that are there. Today the private education system, Madrasa system and the public education are producing three distinct group of people, each fighting with each other group for meeting their employment, for meeting their aspirations and it is becoming a divisive country and we need to address to that with the lessons that we get from the United States. The second is harnessing our human resources. This was one of the objective Muktadi said of this organization which I did not know but also Roshan mentioned the same thing is tapping the human resources of Bangladesh. The quality of education of the Arabic stream and the Bangla stream is very poor. Much lower than what we have seen in early 70s and 80s, the number, though the number is very high. Take it from me because we have looked into it very seriously. The children who could compete with the world in 70s and 80s, the products cannot compete today. And since the products of these secondary schools from Bangla Channel and the Madrasa schools, streams, cannot get job in their own <coughs> system, they are taken as migrated labor and workers to Malaysia, to Indonesia, to Saudi Arabia, to EAV and others. They are unskilled workers. They are providing hard labor. They are working hard. They have no human dignity. They have no human rights. Their familial rights and connections with the families are not there. They have reached a level of services which are compared to the slavery. The slavery of the 18th century that existed in the United States and across the world the Bangladeshi workers are facing the same slavery, same absence of their rights and not. On the other hand, the remittances are mounting, as Ambassador Schaefer has said. It's one of the highest the hills of remittances are mounted there in the Bangladesh Bank. This is used not even for investments. This is used only for consumption purpose. And this is used to serve the interest of the group of the privileged. We need to offer, prepare these workers, give them these skills, give them their rights, so that when they go to the Middle East, when they go to Malaysia or Indonesia, they go and can go, they can have their families, they can work there, they can settle there. And a worker who comes to the United States in five years, they get the green card. In ten years, they bring their children, their wives, and others. But there are workers who are working in Bangladesh worker for 15, 20 years, 25 years in Middle East and other countries with nothing to get. This is unacceptable. 